caught my fiancé cheated on me made her lose a job. She is begging me to take her back. I really wonder when I will get past this I-24 male and my fiancé 25 female have been together for six years. I proposed to her during COVID and she was actually having her affair when she accepted my proposal. Why would anybody do that? Why would someone accept a marriage proposal from one person while sleeping with somebody else? I'm a pretty awkward guy, I've never been big with the ladies, but when I met my fiancé. Let's call her Bess. I was head over heels in love within a minute. I had never been in love before, but I knew she was the one I wanted to spend my life with as soon as I met her. For some reason, she seemed to really like me as well, and we were talking about kids and moving in together by the end of the week. The time up until D-Day was great, at least it was for me, obviously couldn't have been that great for Bess. One day, I happened to Essie a glimpse of a message on her phone that made me pause. I laid awake that night and got up while she was sleeping and went through it. I am very comfortable with technology, I actually make a living through some mobile apps I made. I'm not super rich, but I could comfortably take a year off without suffering any long-term economic consequences. Anyway, I didn't find anything the absolutely conclusive, but I did find a lot of suspicious stuff like deleted messages. She also had a Snapchat contact with an icon that indicated a lot of interaction. There were also some pictures of a guy I didn't recognize. So I installed spyware to monitor her mobile, I just did a Google search and selected the most expensive service I could find. I could even turn the camera and microphone remotely. The next day Bess was supposed to go on a five-day business trip, she works in sales so this wasn't necessarily something that was strange for her. But as soon as she was out the door the messages started going back and forth. I was devastated, I vomited several times, I just couldn't believe what I was reading. For a long time I refused to accept what it meant. I became obsessed and started going through everything I could get access to. I found out their affair had started more than two months before I proposed to her. Her AP, a work colleague, was a married man 10 years her senior with three children and a wife there was seven months pregnant at this point. The final insult that day was when I could hear them in action in the hotel room, they profess their love for each other, badmouth me and his wife. They talk about running away and starting a new family. I was totally distraught. I had no idea what to do. I didn't have the guts to call and confront her. In the end, I ended up calling my best friend since childhood. Let's call him Kay. Kay grew up in a Brazilian favela, he was already tough as nails when he and his mother moved in next door when I was 12. This was in the UK by the way. Kay's father had died a few years before, Kay never really talked about it, his mother said he died in a random act of violence. My mother left us when I was 10, she was pills obsessed and my father never remarried. Kay didn't know a word of English, but over that first summer we became close friends, and I learned some Portuguese, and he some English. I guess we bonded so strongly, through shared trauma. Me and Kay has been inseparable since, which is kind of weird, I am a conflict, shy and awkward nerd. Kay is very popular, and not afraid of anything, unlike me. Kay is not big or muscular, or anything like that, he's just damn tough. Everybody loves Kay, in high school someone planned a surprise party for him and 250 people showed up. I can probably count my friends on one hand, and three of them are more people I know than actual friends. I told Kay everything, showed him the messages and the emails I managed to uncover, he was silent for a long time. He told me that he couldn't give me any specific advice, because this was something I had to deal with. I had to deal with this the way that was right for me. He then proceeded to remind me about a girl he had been with that had cheated on him, he went nuclear, he exposed her to family friends and went no contact. I had no idea what to do, Kay's suggestion was the only thing I had so I told him that I wanted to do was something like that, to Bess. For the next few days we packed all her stuff drove it to a storage unit, changed the locks on my apartment and prepared to pick her up from the airport. Thankfully Kay was driving, I was actually sitting on my hands to hide how much they were shaking. Bess was all happy and laughing when she got into the car, she instantly notices something wrong with me. I just told her I wasn't feeling well. 
Kay smiled at her and told her I had a cool surprise planned for her at her parents' house. I didn't say anything not a single word the entire trip, I tried to to not let her see my face, and I faked the smile as best I could. From the moment Bess got into the car, the rest of the day seemed like it played out in slow motion. I had already talked to her parents the day before and told them we were coming by. I told them I had the surprise announcement to make. When we arrived there were hugs and smiles and I almost backed out at that point. I love her parents, they've been so good to me and always made me feel welcome. Soon Bess was sitting on the sofa in between her parents. At some point someone asked about the big surprise? Kay encouraged me to go on. I started off by telling her parents how fond I was with them and how grateful I was that they had welcomed me into their family and treated me in such a way that I always felt welcome. Then I choked up for a few minutes, I had this entire speech planned out, it was eloquent and composed. I totally forgot my speech so I just blurted it out, Bess has been cheating on me with a work colleague that has kids and his wife is seven months pregnant. The engagement is off, the wedding is off. Our relationship is over. Bess your stuff is in the storage container. I just dropped the key on the floor. This is goodbye forever. I walked out while everyone was just sitting there silent. I heard Kay tell them that I needed time to heal and to please don't contact me unless it's absolutely necessary. In the car, Kay told me to post to the Facebook group. The Facebook group, what's where we were planning the wedding. Everybody was on there. My entire family, her entire family, friends, everyone. I posted a short message almost identical to what I told her parents and then disconnected from the group. Kay kept telling me he was proud of me, that one day I would look back at this and be happy that I stood up for myself. I was just stunned, nothing about this felt good, or real. The next planned stop, what's the APS wife, when she opened the door I just blurted it all out, I didn't even introduce myself. I'm pretty sure she slapped me at some point. As I gave her a thumb drive with the evidence on it her husband comes around the corner behind her. His wife immediately started screaming, she told him to get lost and not come near her. He tried making excuses, but as soon as he took a step forward, Kay was right up in his face instantly, you heard the lady. Get out. After a bit more back and forth, he eventually packed a bag and scuttled off. Kay talked to his wife for a while. I was just trying to process my screwed up life in my mind. In the end we were invited inside Kay called his mother and we agreed to spend the night until her father could arrive the next morning to pick her up. She was scared her husband will turn back up and she did not want to be alone. Inside I was treated like I had turned invisible, no one saw me or noticed me. I just sat there crying silently. I understand she was in a much worse situation than me. I was not married and did not have kids. Still I was breaking inside that nobody even looked at me. At some point they all fell asleep, I still sat there crying, I decided that I was going to just end it. I started looking for pills, but I couldn't find any. In the end, I got a long tool and I planned to just push it through the heart. I held it towards my chest with both hands and when I took a deep breath the tool went under my rib cage and penetrated about a centimeter. I have no idea how long I stood there, in the end I left the tool on the table and went back to my chair. There I sat crying for the rest of the night. I just couldn't get my head around what's happening. Her father arrived 5.30 in the morning, I opened the door to let him in. He was amazingly calm, considering how I looked, he calmly asked me some questions and if I was okay. I mumbled some gibberish. He went inside to find his daughter while I just stood there holding the door. Shortly after Kay came out to talk to me. I stared at him for a minute, then I just passed out. I woke up in the hospital, it's three months ago now. Kay stayed with me the first few weeks after I returned home, he was scared I was going to off myself again. I haven't talked a word to my ex-fiancé, I changed my phone number, I blocked her email address and all access on social media. She has come to my door a few dozen times, she talks through the door. Sometimes she talks for hours. She talks about how sorry she is she begs for forgiveness. She has told me that she has broken it off with the AP, 
that the APS wife is divorcing him, that she's been fired because the APS wife reported them to HR. When she comes I just sit right inside the door I listen to her and cry. I'm just torturing myself. I haven't responded to her yet. She's told me that she could see the door move when I leaned against it, so she knows I'm there. I haven't healed anything, I still love her like crazy, but my heart and soul is just too damaged. I am full of anger, hatred and shame. I know I can never go back to her, it would totally destroy what little self-esteem and self-respect I still have. The confrontation at her parents' place, telling the APS wife. It gave me nothing to feel better about. If anything I regret not just walking away. People have been telling me at some point go numb or becoming different, I hope that day is soon for me, because right now every day is hell. Update I ended up deciding to try to talk to her parents to see whether or not they could get her to stop coming to my door. I don't really care what her reasons are, I don't care what she wants. I realize now that's my perception of her and who she actually is in real life are two different people. So she can take a long walk off a short pier for all I care, I just want her out of my life so I can move on. Maybe I get a cat or something. Anyway before I was ready to talk to her parents, her dad showed up at my door. He had a six pack of my favorite beer and he asked if we could talk, I said sure, and told him I'm on my way out. Maybe we could walk and talk? I didn't want him to come inside, not just because I've been a mess and my apartment reflects that. I didn't want to let him in and maybe suddenly his daughter would be at the door or something. Or if it got awkward, I didn't want to have to tell him to leave. I am not big on confrontation as you know. He popped two bottles of beer and he just started to talk. Initially he apologized on behalf of his daughter, then he tells me that his wife and daughter had been pressuring him to go see me to somehow get me to talk to his daughter. He proceeded to tell me that he had no intention you doing that, quite the contrary, he supported my decisions and actions. He told me that his daughter was spoilt and selfish, and that he hoped that for once she would have to face the full consequences of our actions. Maybe, he hoped, she could be a better person in the future. Then he got really weird, really fast, he started asking me a lot of questions about how I was. The questions were leading, and it was obvious that he was hopeful that I was in a lot of pain. It was like he was anticipating me being in a lot of pain and that he would enjoy seeing that. It freaked me out, so I told him the complete opposite. That I was over his daughter, that it didn't really bother me that much. I was very happy now and moving on etc. He seems very disappointed in this, I have no idea why. Then he went on to talk about my ex's pain. His tone was all wrong when he did this, he was trying to hide it, but he seemed gleeful that he was enjoying it. I noped right out of it at that point, I pretended I forgot something at home, I said goodbye and ran off. I'm done with my ex now, you strangers snapped me out of it. I am ready to move on. It still hurts and my self-esteem and ego is still shot. But I am done, I am ready to move on. A lot of you were right I think. I dodged a bullet, not just with her, but probably with the rest of her family as well. What kind of father is gleeful of his child's suffering? Update After the feedback on my last post I realized that maybe I misread the situation with her father. He has always been great to me, and I have a lot of respect for him. I decided to give him a call and just talk to him. You guys were right, his leading questions to me was because he was trying to find out if there was any chance of me going back to his daughter. He said he was hopeful for that, and that I was good for her. Even though he said she didn't deserve me. That made me feel really good about myself for a while, that he recognized that. The reason he was smiling when he talked about his daughter was the culmination of a lifelong argument with his wife about her parenting style. He had told her so many times over the years that letting her daughter get away with things, spoiling her, not giving her discipline, etc. This would have severe negative consequences in the future. His biggest regret with his daughter was letting his wife overrule him on this. 
He was smiling and being gleeful in anticipation of telling his wife he was right. I asked him if everything was okay between us and there was no problems at all. But he jokingly said, maybe it was time for him to get a divorce. Apparently the confrontation between him and his wife and daughter didn't go that well after meeting me. But this time he told me, he wasn't going to back down. This seemed to be a fight that had been a long time coming for him. As for Kay. He has been great, as he always is, he has been supporting me and encouraging me all along. Now that I am out of it, I realize how right he was that one day I would be proud of what I had done. I stood up for myself, something I usually never do, and I feel awesome from it. 100% will do again in the future, when necessary. My ex showed up again at my door, and I actually talked to her this time, she begged me to let her in so we could talk. But I wasn't going to talk to her on her terms, if I was going to talk to her, it would be on my terms. I told her okay, but I had some things to do, and that I would meet her at a local park in half an hour. I didn't want her inside in my mess. And as some of you pointed out, maybe she could make some accusations, or something if I met her alone. Strangely enough I wasn't nervous, felt kinda good actually. For once in my life, I felt pretty sure of myself. Anyways I went to the park, she was there crying. I sat down, we had some meaningless small talk. She tried to interrogate me about what me and her father talked about, I told her that was private between me and him and frankly, none of her business. I was starting to get bored so I asked her what she wanted to talk about. She then went into this hour-long tirade about how sorry she was, she loved me so much, how wrong it was, how she hurt me, yada yada. She begged for me to consider reconciling. She would do anything. I told her I forgive her because I don't want to carry that anger, hat read and hurt anymore. But no. Getting back together? That is never going to happen. People who love other people don't do what she did to me. Her actions prove beyond any doubt that she's not a nice person. Nice people don't do what she did. I can never trust her again. I told her I want to live my life with a nice person that I can trust, a person that appreciates and loves me. And due to her actions, she is no longer a viable candidate for that role in my life. She cried hysterically, I sat there and watched, it was strange, I have never felt that detached from anybody. I actually felt upset about how little I cared. This indifference isn't me, I can't remember any other time at least. I called her dad to come get her, I told her that I hoped she would get some counseling and fix herself, something was obviously broken inside of her. I tried to encourage her that she would get through this, but she didn't really want to hear any of that. Her dad came, I explained the situation to him. I told her I wish her all the best and good luck. Then I got an Uber went to the local animal shelter and adopted a kitten. I named the kitten Shiny. Kay joked that he was blinded by my new shiny spine. So Kitten's name is Shiny to always remind me to stand up for myself. I am happy, I managed to take the high road and just be honest with her without yelling or calling her names. I've been playing with my amazing kitten, having a lot of fun and Kay is coming over later to play some video games and swing down some beers. I am sad about my ex, I feel sorry for her. I will miss the good times we had, but I'm also relieved that I am done with this now. I received some hard uncomfortable truths from some of you, but it was what I needed to hear.